So today um, we have Shobha who will bring a summary of our Bible study. So over to you, Shobha. Good evening, all. Yesterday we were looking at the third section of Acts chapter 4. This passage is titled as Witness of the Disciples. Um, portion is Acts chapter 4, 13 to 22. It mentions about the credentials of the disciples. The disciples were courageous and confident. They were unschooled and ordinary men. These men had been with Jesus. Achin also mentioned about a couple of verses of encouragement and motivation for us. They are 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 to 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26 to 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 and 2. When we feel inadequate to do certain things, we have to trust God and rely on his strength. Next is the dilemma of the Sanhedrin. Verses 14 to 18. Firstly, um, they, they cannot deny the miracle, healing of the lame man, verse 14 and 16. They were confused, verses 15, 16 and 21. They did not know what to do with the disciples, so they let them go. Next is the declaration of the disciples, verses 18 to 20. The Sanhedrin tells Peter and John that they should not speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John says to the Sanhedrin, should we listen to you, O God? They said, we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard shows the courage and confidence of Peter and John. This is because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Next is the power of witnessing, verse 21. The court, the court dismissed Peter and John. The only advice was not to speak in the name of Jesus. They could not decide how to punish them as all the people were praising God for all what had happened. Yesterday's verse for meditation was Acts chapter 4, 13. For us to reflect on what do people see in us? Can people look at us and see that we belong to Jesus, that we walk with Jesus? Thank you. You did a great job. Uh, good summary of what we, uh, the Bible study yesterday. So we are going to proceed. Um, today we are going into the fourth uh, section and the last section of chapter 4, which says witness of the early. So the four sections, uh, uh, to recap, uh, we started chapter 4 saying the trouble begins where the uh, opposition began and the first arrest of Peter and John. Then we went into, listen to Peter's third sermon, which he preached before the Sanhedrin. And then we see the continuation of the trial before the Sanhedrin and how the disciples stood as witnesses. And today we are in the last section of uh, Acts chapter 4, which is uh, verses 23 to 37. And the title for today's uh, passage is Witness of the Early Church. So what are we going to see about uh, in this passage? First of all, we see that the church, the early church, was united in prayer and worship. Uh, as we read verse 24, verse 24 says, When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. That's the first part of verse 24. When we say that when they heard this, what did they hear and who heard? So we have to read uh, verse 23 to understand that particular phrase, when they heard this. Now, verse 23 says, On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. So, Peter and John, when they got released from the temple or from the court, they went to the place where all the believers were gathered. And they told them all that happened. And when the people, the believers heard this, so who heard this? Uh, it refers to the believers who heard what Peter and John said. They raised their voices together in prayer to God. 
So what is their prayer? Their prayer is found in verses uh, in uh, 24, part, second part of verse 24, 25 and 26. Let me read that. Second part of verse 24. Please follow this in your Bible. It says, Sovereign Lord, they said, you have made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Now, these are references. Uh, we are not going to read the references, but if you are taking notes, you can write down. That it is from Psalm 146, verse 6, and Psalm uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now, what are they praying? Actually, if you notice, it is not, it is not prayer. It is praise unto God. They are seeing God as the creator and God as the source of everything that exists in this world. You created every, everything in this world. And they are also saying that you create every situation in this world. Kings uh, of the earth rise up and rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. And this has direct reference to what happened to Jesus. And what they are, what the, they begin the pray, prayer by saying, Sovereign Lord. God is sovereign. What does it mean by being sovereign when God is sovereign? It is a very powerful word. The sovereignty of God means that there is nothing that is out of the purview of God. Everything that happens, God is in control of everything. We are in a very difficult situation now. A lot of us have asked the question, this coronavirus, is God, did, did God allow it? Or why isn't God doing, uh, bringing about a healing or a vaccine or something to protect the people? So we have to again reaffirm and say, God is sovereign. There is nothing that can happen without God's knowledge. So, uh, and, and then the apostles, uh, the, the believers continue to say in verse 27 and 28, they, uh, notice the words that they're saying. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. This is their prayer to God. They are saying to God that Herod and Pilate and all the Gentiles joined together against your anointed one, Jesus. Then they say in verse 28, they did what your power and will had decided before should happen. So even the death of Jesus, the suffering of Jesus, we know it is foretold in the Old Testament. And here they are saying, they are not angry now that the Jews or the Romans crucified Jesus. They are saying in verse 28, it says, they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. So we see the sovereignty of God. And then in verse 31, what is the result of their prayer and worship? What happens uh, in verse 31 is it says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Dear friends, there is great power in prayer and worship. Prayer and worship should go hand in hand. Whenever we spend time in prayer, we should make sure that we begin with worship. We should praise God for whatever situation we are in. We worship God for who he is. We should lift up our hearts and praise and worship to God. And when that happens, it says the whole, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God boldly. You know, our prayer should shake us. It should shake the, uh, our, the place that we meet. And there should be a filling of the Holy Spirit. We should feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is not just blabbering words. We all are used to liturgical services. Some people say that you say the same prayers Sunday after Sunday, you say the same things. 
but you add the holy spirit into it and you see the blessings that come out of it so friends it is not a, a problem with the liturgy not problem with the prayer it is just uh, we ourselves preparing ourselves to pray in the spirit and asking for god's blessing upon upon us through the holy spirit okay so this is the first so the first point that we saw there is that they were united in prayer and <coughs> worship second they were uh, they were united in purpose acts chapter 4 verses 29 30 and 33 now they they were the, this is the witness of the uh, early church they were united in prayer and worship now they are united in purpose how do we know that verse 29 they started preaching with boldness now this is their prayer to god this is part of their prayer that prayer that they making to god and in that verse 29 they say now lord consider their threats and enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness that is their prayer to god the, you should remember in chapter 4 what is the threat the threat is in chapter 4 verse 18 we saw that yesterday they, uh, chapter 4 verse 18 says then they called them in again they called that is peter and john in again to the sanhedrin and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of jesus so this is the threat and the believers are all together in uni unity and their prayer is lord give us the that we will preach the word of god with great boldness it is not just boldness it is great boldness so second we see in verse 30 signs and wonders in his name then they pray and say stretch out your out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant jesus and if you look back into chapter 4 verse 7 one of the issues that the people had the sanhedrin had with peter and john was in verse 7 it says by what power and in whose name have you done this and we know peter very boldly said it is in the name of jesus that this man is healed so the they are so clear in what they want to do they are saying lord continue to stretch out your hand and do miracles do signs and wonders through your holy name through the name of jesus even if we are if we are to be blamed or if we have to face persecution because of your mighty works because of your signs and wonders we are together we want to do it we want you to do it and we want your name to be uh, testified and then we see in verse 33 verse 33 reads testifying about the resurrection of jesus in verse 33 reads with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the lord jesus and god's grace was so powerfully at work in them all you know if you go to chapter 4 verse 2 the other issue that god peter and john arrested was in verse 2 says that they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people proclaiming in jesus the resurrection of the dead the very issue that was that the disciples and the apostles and the believers were being persecu persecuted upon they say help us lord to do that and it says the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the lord jesus that was what was troubling the sadducees or the priests we know the sadducees were the chief priest and the high priest and they were now saying uh, continuing to preach on about the resurrection of the lord jesus so you see the uni their unity in purpose preaching they are praying that they can preach with greater boldness they are saying god continue to do signs and wonders in your name uh, and then they continue they go on preaching about the resurrection of jesus so we see the first two points in the witness of the early church the first point is that they were united in prayer and worship the second point is they were united in purpose and the third point is they were united in resources very very interesting very challenging verse 32 says 
the believers were of one heart and mind if you read verse 32 it says all the believers were one in heart and mind no one claimed okay we go to the second point when we say united in uh, their resources they shared their resources verse 32 says the second part of verse 32 says no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own but they shared everything they had imagine the unity in the early church nobody said this is mine that is yours they had everything in common everything was anybody could use what was available there that was we can't imagine of a situation like that and i'll i'll tell you why it was i have i explained that earlier also when we started the book of acts and then in verse 34 and 35 it says there was no one needy in that place verse 34 says that there were no needy persons among them from time to time those who own land or houses sold them brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need dear friends even the thought of selling houses and lands and bringing it and placing at the feet of the apostles and sharing it equally distributing it to those who were in need that was the unity they had in the early church and i'll tell i told you earlier why the believers did that and why we can't do it today two reasons why they did it let me remind you first of all there was severe persecution and none of these believers had any assurance that they will live for a long time they all thought that their end is near because as we continue to study the book of acts we will see how the persecution became severe in jerusalem and in other places and how they had to flee from jerusalem people were they were it is said that there were not enough number of cross to crucify the christians christians were um, declared as unfit for that state and they were given the capital punishment of crucifixion at one point in the roman empire there were not enough cross for christians to be crucified so that was the level of persecution so people said what is the point in keeping all this land and all this a uh, property and all these things i might as well sell it and give it to people who are in need because my end is coming near sometimes this corona virus also reminds us of certain things like this it says uh, we say we thought that we have houses we have everything we are comfortable but we are even scared to shake hands we are scared to sit next to someone in the train anything can happen to anyone dear friends i'm not saying that you have to sell your property or um, uh, sell your houses and all that but then let's think of the people who are in need we have a commitment to them and i want to close with verse 36 and 37 you read of a very interesting person called barnabas one of my very favorite characters in the bible and what is mentioned about barnabas a few lines are mentioned about barnabas in verse 36 and 37 now all of you know that this bible study has been going on for the past 13 14 days and all uh, you all have been participating with lot of interest writing notes and asking questions and looking there's a good participation in the bible study there are people from other churches who are participating i'm so excited every time i prepare these bible studies i am going to give you a small task and this this should, this should not deter anyone from attending bible studies okay and this is if this is a very voluntary task if you want to take it upon yourself i want you to study about the person barnabas i have made a study and i have uh, all the all the points related to barnabas i wish i can share that with you but i somehow felt as i was studying the uh, preparing for this bible study i should leave that task to you you have to just go to the net and try to find out articles that are written about barnabas his name comes up in the book of acts in so many other places 
and a very very inspiring character very inspiring character and i would like you to study about barnabas if there is anyone who has made a study or who will complete a study who will take it up and if you if you get stuck somewhere please feel free to contact me i'll be happy to help you or if you need some guidance on how to do a study on barnabas i can take you through that but if at least a few people make an effort to study about barnabas and send me a paper or send me an email about what you have studied about barnabas i'll be very very encouraged let not bible study be one way that only me doing the bible study i would like you to make an attempt to study the bible so i'm giving you a task is that try to find out who barnabas is what all is told about barnabas in the bible and how he can inspire you and me so friends we come to the verse for meditation uh, today's i hope you got all the points there are three points in a witness of the early church they were united in prayer and worship they were united in purpose they were united in their resources verse for meditation i like i like this verse acts chapter 4 verse 33 with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the lord jesus and god's grace was so powerful at work in them all how i wish that all of us including me and all all of us have the same spirit of the apostles with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the lord jesus it was not a easy situation for them to testify it was not a conducive situation for them to proclaim about jesus they were in a very hostile situation yet they relied on the holy spirit when god gives us an opportunity maybe in our workplaces maybe with our neighbors or wherever maybe while you are traveling can we testify the salvation of our lord jesus christ and this will happen only when you allow the holy spirit to empower you so the key here is that great when we read the word power when we read about power that is mentioned in acts we should always go back to the key verse acts chapter 1 verse 8 and you shall receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth dear friends that power is available to you and me we need to allow the holy spirit to come on to us and to fill us and to strengthen us god bless you